Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, it's going to be a little bit of a two-for-one. So we're going to talk about some mini lay stuff, and we're also going to do some design talk. So what I want to share with you is a new design I came up with for a poor man's DRO for what I would call the x-axis of my mini lathe. So with this, um, I have went through a couple of design iterations, and I want to talk about how I sort of came up with this end product. So one of the pieces I'd like to share with you guys is this bottom piece. So one of the pieces that, that I decided to do was in this bottom piece, as you notice, I've got the slots um, kind of carved in here, and I have reciprocating slots here where this goes together like this. And the idea is, and it took me a little while to get the height accurate, is the idea is I'm cinching down this nut which goes on the bottom, what I don't want this to do is turn. So having these um, sliders in here or these um, posts or whatever you want to call these keeps this from turning. So that's kind of a neat little addition that I came up with uh, to help with that. Now what I've also done is I use my contour gauge, and you can look back in some of the playlists, to actually model the uh, bed of the lathe itself. And then what I did is I drew this out in uh, Inkscape and then created a vector model, etc. And so that came out pretty good. But one of the things I was noticing as I was mounting this on is uh, this was pulling forward and, and down a little bit. Um, so what I ended up doing, and this kind of served double duty, is I put in two M3s with nuts here on the back. Now, this probably is enough plastic because I printed these with one millimeter walls. So this is a pretty solid piece of plastic. Um, I could have probably tapped this, but I did also put the nuts inside here. So what this actually does is cinches down on the bed and pulls up. So I can loosen this up to place it on, and then I can cinch it down with these. Or if I have these set like this, just cinching it down this way uh, really does the number to hold it in place. And also kind of pull it up because it's having a little tipping problem. I still have a little bit of forward tipping problem with it, but it's not as bad. Now, the other piece I did, as you probably see here, is I changed a little uh, piece up here. I had it set so I could countersink um, a quarter 20 inch bolt head in here. This is kind of a longer bolt. This is from the end stop project. However, what I was finding is trying to get my fingers underneath this, this meter and in between the, the drive bar of the lathe, it was just really too difficult. So I could grasp it, but I couldn't really turn it. So what then I decided to do is I changed this out so I could put a cap head or hex head in here so I can just use an Allen wrench to actually tighten it while I hold this in the bottom. The other thing I could also do is add in like a Phillips head. So here's a quarter 20 Phillips. I could put that in. I could substitute that. I happen to like the hex head, but so this this is another iteration of it so kind of all in all i have gone through about really five iterations in this design and i still don't have it exactly perfect yet i have it well i'll throw this out on thingiverse i uh, actually put probably two versions of this out on thingiverse um but uh uh i'm still probably going to work on this a little bit more because i you know it's tipping forward a little bit just by a couple millimeters um, because there's just a little bit of space inside this section here. So I thought about coming in at an angle this way so it would push it back, but I really don't have a lot of meat in the pieces. I'm, I would have a hard time getting at it even if I angled it in from this backside, and I could have the tailstock and other pieces in the way. Also, um, you know, this distance here is kind of limited because of the tailstock and everything. Because I want to be able to slide the tailstock and everything past this and just kind of have this mounted on the, the lathe all the time. So again, uh, you know, just a few more iterations, I guess. And I'd also like to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts? What are some of the changes that I can make to this to make this a little bit better? Now, what I also did is this is a comp rather complex, well, not overly complex, structure inside of here. So what I actually did is I took this uh, meter and modeled it in OpenSCAD and then took that and, and then took that model and placed it inside here to difference it out. So one of the things you'll notice is I've got this uh, circle recess. So this matches the back of the gauge, so it actually sits in there tight. And then what happens is it's a very tight fit into there for this whole stanchion piece that um, supports the back of the meter here. 
and then obviously the quarter 20 that goes through here cinches everything down. Now it in itself is a very tight fit in here and then what I also ended up doing in this version which I've got this mounted so you can't see it is I've also tapered this opening so it slides into a tight fit because I was having uh, a problem in here and having to kind of clean it out with a clean out tool uh, to get it to fit but it, it actually did so so far I've been happy with the basic design again a couple of things I just like to get it a little bit more square on there and I also kind of thought about you know adding something down here to kind of push back on it but but really there's not any room down here and I wanted it to be a little bit ambidextrous because this should fit most small you know 7 by 14 uh, mini lace so I kind of wanted to keep it a little bit generic so you guys if you wanted to use it can download it so I tell you what let's uh, now that we've taken a look at the design piece of this let's go over to the lathe let's put it on the lathe and see how it works and talk a little bit about it over there Okay, welcome back. We're at the lathe now, and as you see, I've got it installed over here. So in the front here, I've got my end stop, my carriage end stop set up, and back here I've got my uh, poor man's DRO. And as you can see, as I move this back and forth, um, I get a digital readout of the position of my tool. So, you know, if I want to, you know, come back up here, I can zero it out, hit the zero, actually hit the zero. Now, if I want to come in, say, you know, uh, five millimeters, I can come in five millimeters. Now, one of the things I want to talk about here, you notice the negative, and uh, that's because I'm working this backwards. Um, one of the pieces is I was working on this design. Kind of the problem is, see this, this cap that sticks out? So as I kind of push backwards, you see how that cap lengthens back here? Well, when I had it in the front here, which would be the positive direction, Number one, I couldn't use my carriage stop because what I want to do is use my carriage stop coming into the tool or the material. But also this piece over here, this end cap would hit it and I couldn't get the full travel. So what I did is I ended up putting it back here and I can adjust it anywhere on the rail depending where I want it. Now, um, I think this is like a two inch uh, or um, you know roughly 50 millimeter travel. So it's not that huge, but most of the parts I work on this are rather small or short in length so this is actually plenty of travel for me now the other piece I'm going to do is work up an extension to go on the end here on the end of this so I can push it back and move it back a little bit further now the other pieces as mentioning I wanted to keep the design so as you can see it, it easily clears the end stock so my tail stock can move in and out without a problem without hitting this so pretty much everything can move around here now I do have a little bit, uh, again with this guy, you know, coming up and potentially bumping on it, but I can get almost a full throw before it comes up and hits this. And this is where I am going to come up with a little bit of an extension, like I did over here on the, well, you I can't see it over there, on the uh, end stop to extend this out a little bit. And so it hits that so I can get full travel on this, so I can get full roughly two inches of travel on this guy. So I'm also going to work on another DRO for the Y-axis that will mount here and measure off of here using a similar concept. So I'll have two of these meters and so I can measure both my X and Y position on the lathe and, you know, be super cheap, super easy to do. So in the future, I might make one of these out of aluminum on the CNC, but for right now, for what I'm doing, I tell you what, this whole setup really works, you know, great for, again, the parts that I'm making. So. Again, you got a twofer out of this video. We did a little bit of design talk at the onset, and you got a new part for your mini lathe. So if you got a mini lathe and you got a 3D printer, get out to Thingiverse. I'll have the link for this down below. You can download it, print it. Again, happy to hear feedback. How can I make this better? Uh, what else can I make for the mini lathe? I've got a couple other ideas on the block, um, so keep an eye out and look forward to your comments below. Cheers. See you in the next video, and don't forget to subscribe and swag shop. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all.